a first infantry uniform, the German forerunner to the Russian AK-47, a Newark Evening News reporter embedded with the New Jersey 102nd Cavalry. These images and artifacts pay tribute to the 102nd's vital contributions to the Allies' historic efforts on D-Day. They're all now on display at the National Guard Militia Museum of New Jersey in Seeger. It was uh, certainly a, an amazing undertaking. Museum curator Captain Vincent Solomino says South Jerseyans learned of the June 6, 1944 invasion of German-occupied France from this original Philadelphia Inquirer. It did come as a surprise to the American public, and I imagine people at home were rooting for what Eisenhower said. You know, their objective was the elimination of Nazi tyranny over Europe. On shore, New Jersey's 102nd made a huge impact. U.S. tanks rolled over hedgerows and German artillery would destroy them. Cranford, New Jersey's Curtis Cullen took German barbed wire and metal to equip tanks with what they called the rhino plow. General Eisenhower called it an example of Yankee ingenuity at its best, and he said that it was critical to the Allied breakout at Normandy. The 102nd was the first Allied force to reach Nazi-occupied Paris. As they came in on their tanks, they were uh, rushed by hundreds and thousands of people, and they had American flags that they gave out, and it was like a scene from a movie. Uh, one of the troopers in his diary called it the finest and most memorable day of my life. At Brookdale Community College, the state gave distinguished medals to four D-Day soldiers at the Lest We Forget ceremony. It was a massacre, and it's not describable. 92-year-old Staff Sergeant Bernard Friedenberg of Atlantic City was a medic on D-Day. He recalls Nazi resistance was heavy and lethal. I was a medic on the beach. I landed with the first troop. I landed with the first troops to hit the beach, and I just went from one wounded guy to another to another to another. He even crawled into a minefield. I just kept on going. It was mechanical. I knew what I had to do and I did it. Paul Zygo founded Brookdale Center for World War II Studies and Conflict Resolution. They saved the world. They did so not for glory or honor, not for lasting tributes on a printed page, but simply because it had to be done. Professor Zygo said no generation will ever match the achievement of World War II veterans, and he prays none will ever have to. In Lincroft, Michael Hill, NJTV News.